Salam everyone, super excited. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Dr. Syed and of course I love to research the Quran and bring you as per Quran only. So welcome or welcome back to the Quran only channel. Certainly appreciate it. So we're going to be talking about what is Salat. The much awaited topic that I've been researching for quite a while and of course looking at various aspects from a macro level as well as from a micro level including history and whatnot so been through all of the majority of the text so far and this is a super exciting uh, lecture that I'm going to talk about what is Salat according to Quran only so here's the agenda I'm just going to try to stick to the core point the meaning of the word Salat what is Salat all about it's not something new right so this is not something that was just came about when the Quran was revealed. It's been there before the Quran also, right? So we're going to talk about, of course, everything in context as we always do because that's the, the way the Quran is supposed to be read and understood. So we'll talk about the meaning of the Salat as first part of our agenda. Then we'll get into the triliteral root the Swad Lam Wow, right? The meaning, which occurs 99 times in the Quran. So it's not one of those words where we say, well, geez, it's only, you know, a few times in the Quran. We don't know what it means. Well, it's been, in, it's in the Quran for 99 times in various forms and primarily in four derived forms. 12 times as form two verb, Sola, 83 times as a noun, one time as a, also a noun, Musallan, and then three times in the form two active participle, right? So we'll take a look at what these are, and then I'm going to talk about salat, which is also you know occurs in the Quran as an abstract noun. For example, in chapter two, verse forty-five, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, and then of course the same Surah verse one five three. So we'll take a look at what that is also, right? So all these different forms of um, if you don't know Arabic, of course, you can always uh, look them up as two different forms of verbs in Arabic. And I'll, I'll also demonstrate. So I'll have the tabs open so you can, of course, reference if you need be. And then we'll take a look at, of course, the fact that the Quran is consistent, right? So there's no inconsistency in the Quran. And that's the key point of the Quran as a book because the Quran claims itself to be complete, right? So... And of course, it proves itself to be complete and consistent. So we need to take, of course, the book, try to understand the consistency. This implies that the words, the text in the book, the stories in the book, for example, are consistent no matter which chapter you read them from or which surah you're reading. The entire concept, the words, the meanings must remain consistent or there should be no contradiction, right? That's the book claims and that's true because, um, yeah, I have yet to find something that is not consistent. So we'll, you know, keep this core part of the text in mind and then we'll, of course, take a look at what Salat is all about. All right, so number five. Part of the agenda point is salat, which means duty. Um, well, let, well, we'll see. We'll see what that means after we go through all of this. Then you probably be in a better position to really understand what salat is all about. And how do we actually uphold salat? What do we do? Do we pray? Do we what kind of prayer? I mean, how does it work? You know, who sort of like told us how to pray and, and what's going on, right? Not just in, in Islam, but also in other religions. And of course, um, we understand that there are two kinds of uh, laws, right? There's there's the Quran law, and then there's man-made laws, rules, and regulations. All right, so that that's also an important aspect that we'll explore as we go along. All right, so let's dive right in. So thanks for being here one more time. By the way, please, um, if you're new to the channel, um, if you subscribe, I certainly appreciate that. And of course, share this knowledge um, if you find it useful. I appreciate that too. All right, so let's take a look at first what is the meaning of the word Salat. So I'm going to minimize this. Here's the Arabic lexicon. This is Edward Lane's lexicon. If you need, I'll just put a link in the description so you can take a look at this too, by the way. I have downloaded it in the PDF, but it's available online as well. All right, so here's the word 
uh, salu, which is the root word for uh, prayer or salat, right? What does it mean? Well, the basic meaning of uh, this is, for example, I struck or beat that part of him or of the back, which is called sallan, or I hit that part with a thing or with an arrow or some other thing on the authority who says that it is of the dial. And one, you know, and one says also salaytuhu, which is, of course, with respect to derivation, unless it be an instance of interchangeableness of kama and whatever, right? Said of a mare or a she camel. Now, what this means, the word swad lam wow, is simply to follow something closely, right? So, so you hit something uh, at the back or it's, it's the tailbone, um, of, of, the, of the she camel, of the horse, or whatever, right? So that's really what, what salu is. But that's, that's quite different from what we know what salat is, uh, you know, in terms of its meaning. But if you go to sali, which is number two, for which one should say not, right? I'm just reading, uh, you know, this, the same word, okay? So uh, we'll come back to the different forms a little later. But right now, let's go through this so... Um, you understand. All right, so Sully, for which one should not say, or the latter is allowable as agreeable with rule and is occurring as old poetry. So, for example, he prayed, supplicated, or petitioned. So, one of the meanings is, of course, uh, you know, following closely or, or doing your duties, for example, or petitioning. You know, he prayed, supplicated. He performed a the divinely appointed act of prayer, commonly termed salat or salawat, or the, the different forms, right? And then pray thou for them. Salliyala, you, you can pray thou for someone. For example, he prayed for such a one and praised him. And hence, um, for example, it is said in a tradition, whoso is invited to a banquet or a marriage feast, let him comply or if not, let him pray for the inviter. Okay, so you see what's happening. They're, they're just, you know, all over the place meanings, right? So it's just a, a, a think of this as a, as a macro term. So it's not a specific form where, you, you know, you need to know like, oh, hey, go do something, go, you know, this is how you do it. So, so far, it's just a broad, broad concept of, of various meanings. So keep thou to the like of thy prayer. He enjoyed her to repeat the prayer for him. So once again, that's repetitions. It's like something, you know, you're following someone, you're following something closely, doing something. The meaning upon thee be like that for which thou hast prayed. These words he addressed to his daughter on the occasion of her saying, O my Lord, ward off from my father disease, diseases and pain. So... Once again, you're supplicating, you're petitioning. They're saying, for example, the slaves of such one performs the divinely appointed act of prayer, means that they have attained to the age of virility. Said of an angel means he prayed for or begged forgiveness or pardon for him. And thus the verb sometimes means when said of other than an angel, as in the tradition of Saudi, in which it is said, when we die, we'll pray for forgiveness for us, right? So that's really, you know, like moving, continuing on. Let me, let me move forward. He blessed him, meaning he invoked God's blessing upon him. Namely, the Prophet said, Allahumma salli alayhi. By what here follows, according to the rendering of salu alayhi or ala nabi, and others, so one said of God, he blessed him, meaning he conferred blessing upon him, and he had mercy on him, and he magnified him, or conferred honor upon him. Hence the saying, Allahumma salli ala, and so on, right? So, or for example, Inna Allah wal malaikatahu yasalluna ala nabi. This is, of course, in the Quran also. So, and, and the verb does not import two things here, for it has there only one meaning, which is magnification. That is 
These words mean, verily God and his angels magnify the prophet, okay? Or rather, I would render them bless the prophet. So this kind of continues, right? But overall, and if I, if I go further, for example, let's go to number four right here, said of a mare, the parts on the right and left of her tail or other part of either side of her tail became relaxed, she being near to bringing forth. Or said of a she camel, her young one fell into part of her called Soldan and she was near to bringing forth. So the, the word Soldan, the middle of the back of a human being or of any quadruple. Or as some say, the part that slopes down from the hips or haunches or the space intervening between the hinder projection of the haunch or rump of a beast and the tail or the part on the right and left of the tail right so it's just like you know you like like the the backbone basically going from front to back right so which is similarly in relation to a she camel properly meaning the two parts bordering upon the tailbone or the place in which it is set the tail of a horse or the bone upon which there are two buttocks, right? All right, so that's, and, and similarly, if I move forward a little bit, salat, to be written or prefixed to a pronoun and also in dual number. So that's really, you know, and of course there's other forms of salat like musalli, and I'm, I'm gonna show you this next also, where in the Quran it is 99 times in which derived form, we'll talk about that too. But this is just to give you an overall idea of uh, the various broader aspects of uh, the word salu, the root word suad lam wow, and of course its various forms. Now, based on this, okay, based on, on, on the root meaning of the word, the Quran has placed this word, this root word, 99 times, okay, in one form or the other. So let's take a look at where in the Quran this occurs, okay? And this is to our, let me bring up the agenda points here so I don't uh, detract myself because this topic is huge, okay? I can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. I'm going to try to make it very, very concise and very, very, um, keep it to uh, within the ambit of our discussion here. So. So we know the meaning of the word Salat. Now, this is the meaning according to the Lane's lexicon. Um, we'll take a look at what actually it means in the Quran. Once we take a look at, you know, in which forms uh, it occurs in various uh, places within the entire book, 99 times. But of course, I'm not going to cover all the 99 times. We probably don't have time. I mean, I love to cover it, by the way, but it's just going to be a huge, long lecture. So um, I'm going to try to show you the the objective here is to show you the consistency of this word in the quran right and if we can find uh, the meaning the consistent meaning in the quran boom that's it that's where it's you know that's what the word would mean and it has to fit perfectly within the context also not just you know one sentence for example or one verse but it has has to flow right that's what consistency is all about all right so Next is we're going to take a look at the trilateral. We did uh, take a look at the meaning. We'll take a look at the uh, different occurrences in the Quran. Now, before I jump into the occurrence, just a quick non-religious definition of the word. If I can find it in my notes here. Yeah, just this part. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this. So the core non-religious dictionary meaning of Salat is that part of the rump or tailbone of a lead horse to which a second horse adheres, which means follow the lead horse closely, okay? That's what that means. Now, the definitions that we've taken a look at, by the way, right here, the word Salut, sort of like mean the same thing, right? They're talking about animals, they're talking about tailbone, they're talking about prayer, they're talking about supplication, they're also talking about petitioning, right? So something related to following, right? Or doing something that is closely related or following closely. Uh, 
to certain orders, right? Or to a certain instruction. That's what that sort of like implies overall so far. All right. So let's go back to our occurrences in the Quran. There we go, which is our next um, thing I want to talk about. So the, the word right here, let me scroll up. Perfect. So if you research the triliteral root, Swad Lam Wow occurs 99 times in the Quran in four derived forms. 12 times as the form to verb, Solla. And we know verb is sort of like an action, right? Doing something. 83 times as a noun, which is by far, you know, the highest number of occurrences of the word Salat, right? Is, is 83 times. So the word Salat, you know, with, with the, you know, the T at the end, right? The Tha at the end is 83 times. Once as a noun, musallan, and three times as a form to active participle. So, now, just by looking at the occurrences, 99 times in the Quran, we know that majority of the times it is used as a noun, which is a thing. It's just a thing, right? Now, what thing this is, that's exactly what we're here to unpick, right? According to the Quran only. So, the verb to occurs in the following chapters, right? Surahs and, of course, the verses. And then the noun occurs, of course, similarly in other places all throughout the Quran. Now, to make things simpler, okay, instead of going through each one of these verses in context, it's, of course, going to take a long time uh, for us to take a look at this, but, of course, uh, to make life easier. What I've done is I've first taken a look at the different types of prayers in various religions and there are three major religions in the world of course christianity judaism and then islam okay so the concept of prayer has been around not just you know in the quran but before quran also okay so it's not something new that's we must understand this and even in the quran the word salat by the way, which means prayer, in, in if you're a Muslim, you would know, right, that the prayer is, or salat, or namaz, as we call it, that's a Persian name for it, it's, it's, it's not something new, by the way, okay? Even in the Quran, if you read the Quran, Quran talks about salat for Jewish folks, uh, salat for Christianity, and Nazarenes, not, not Christians, right, at that time, or Judaism, talks about Abraham, the word associated salat and you know adam with salat and all the messengers with uh, isa they talk about salat right so this word is is uh, with every messenger of god okay so every messenger of god use this word salat so that kind of tells me that hey this has to be something that everyone can follow because the quran is not for muslims only it's for mankind right we know that this book says that it's for everyone so that means this word salat must be something that can be consistently followed by everyone but of course we look at the christian prayer which is absolutely different or relatively different i should say and it has many forms you have the lord's prayer you have the child's prayer and there are many types of prayers right we have the mealtime prayer we have the seasonal prayer we have prayer to saints we have the listening prayer, and, and so on. So there are types of prayers. If we go to the Jewish prayer area, we also notice that there are traditionally three prayer services, like the morning prayer, the afternoon prayer, and the evening prayer. And there are two additional services are recited on Shabbat and other holidays, right? Like Musaf and so on. So that's the Jewish prayer. Similarly, the word Salat, which the Muslims categorize as uh, namaz or salat namaz of course is the persian word and and they have their own types of salat and it's not just the you know basic five prayers it's, it's actually additional prayers also like you have eid prayers you have friday prayer you have um you know if, if it's not raining for example there's a prayer for that um let's see if i can bring up 
the list of prayers. Yeah, there we go. So there are many, many types of Salat even in Islam. Some are compulsory. Okay. And yeah, I mean, this is all, of course, man-made, right? It's not something that the Quran talks about. We'll take a look at what the Quran says, of course, just in a little while. But just to, you know, set the stage so we know exactly what, you know, the concept of Salat is. So there are many, many types of prayers in Islam um, also like compulsory prayers we have five the daily prayers five uh, daily prayers then we have uh, different sects within islam of course they have their own types of prayers also special congregational prayers like you know like the the, the eid prayers there are two eids um, and then there's nafal which is extra prayers and so on right so each uh, religion or one of the top major religions, whether it's Islam, Christianity, or Judaism, they have their own, you know, types of prayers. The common meaning among, you know, all these three is is the fact that they're just petitioning to God, right? It's just bowing in front of God, which is which is great because overall that's the concept. The way they do it, of course, is different, and that. Kind of makes sense because if you're a Muslim, you have to follow a certain set of rules and regulations set forth in Islam, right? And if you're a Christian, you will follow the rules and regulations set forth in the Gospels, for example. And if you're, you know, if you're um, of the Jewish heritage, you would maybe follow the Talmud. Now, the Talmud um, is, is sort of like think of this as the Hadith of Jews, right? Just like we have the Hadith for Muslims. So there's extra a text or books available that sort of like relate to for example if you're Muslim you will relate to the Prophet right um, who basically told everyone how to pray and set forth the tradition now before Islam there was for example um, yeah there was no even even during by the way even the, during the life of the Prophet, from the first Rahi, there was no Salat, there was no prayers. It was only when, uh, according to the Hadith, it's not in the Quran, by the way, and none of this is in the Quran that I'm saying. It's only coming all from uh, the text of Hadith, right? Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim or other texts, right? So according to those texts, of course, the, the five compulsory prayers only got compulsory when the Prophet went uh, to the Maharaj, right? When he went to the heavens and, and talked to God. And that's really when the Salat became compulsory. Same thing with uh, the the Azan, right? The, the five, um, you know, in the mosques we hear um, the Azan. This was not uh, in the early years of the prophethood. It was only afterwards, okay? So uh, we know that, you know, that these texts that you know, typically Muslims follow are, are the hadith primarily. All right, so now we know the different kinds of prayers and, and what different, you know, religions overall kind of follow. And we also know the meaning of the word salat or swad lam wow. Okay. All right, perfect. So let's see where we're at. All right, so we looked at the root word and it's 99 times in the Quran and four derived from. All right, let's dive a little bit deeper into the Quran now and see what the Quran has to talk about and, and say about Salat. So I'm going to just take a look at the three occurrences, um, maybe four or five occurrences, and then take a look at in context. And that will set the stage for you to just like, you know, when you read the Quran, when you try to understand the Quran, you will see the word Salat. Just read the context and see if the meaning of the word, as we just talked about, fits in the context or not. It's just this simple. I'm going to keep it right here, okay? All right, so for example, let's say we take a look at chapter 2. And then we look at 238, okay, where God says, okay, so let's take a look at what, what God is talking about. You know, of course, the, the general meaning, keep in mind, is prayers, right? I mean, it's one of the meanings also. So let's open up the Quran and, and see what's 
uh, chapter 2 verse 238 has to say all right so I have it right here this is Surah Al-Baqarah by the way and if you go to um, verse 238 this is where the word is used salawat and then was salat okay all right now before I read the the actual meaning let's scroll up a little bit so we know the context of course we always read the Quran in the context because if you don't read the Quran in context you would not know what God is talking about so here in this section right God is talking about marriage and divorces that's what's going on so if I scroll up a little bit let's say we start with verse 235 God says and you do no wrong in what you intimate to women of engagement or hide within yourselves God knows that you will remember them but make not nor take an oath with them secretly save that you speak a fitting word and decide not upon the marriage contract until the law reaches its term and know that God knows what is within your souls so fear him and know that God is forgiving forbearing verse 236 you do no wrong if you divorce women when you have neither touched them nor appointed for them an obligation but make them a gift the wealthy according to his means and the straightened according to his means a gift according to what is fitting is binding upon the doers of good verse 237 and if you divorce them before you have touched them but I've appointed for them an obligation then half of what you appointed save that they forego it or he forego it in whose hand is the marriage contract and to forego is nearer to prudent fear and forget not kindness among you God sees what you do now verse 238 keep your duties which is salu right to to follow something closely just like the lead horse you know the horse is behind the lead horse they have to turn wherever the lead horse turns they have no choice per se right just like in a buggy right when you're you know when there, there's three or four horses tied to each other in in uh, you know in a row I mean uh, the lead horse is the one who's yeah if he turns left you know the rest of the horses behind him they must turn left because they're tied with the you know with the reins or whatever right so keep to the duties hafidu ala salawat was salat al wusata now in traditional uh, of course meanings or islam is it's the prayer it's the is the prayer the middle prayer right but in fact it's the duty between extremes because wusata the word in the quran the, the arabic word wusata means between extremes okay which means a balance somewhere in the middle so now if you read the if you remember the context what we were talking about is is about the marriage and divorces so if you divorce you know then you have to make sure that hey do not you know tilt yourself from you know to an extreme position but keep your duties and the duty between extremes now what duty of course the duty that God assigns on top here right about um, you know making sure that you're giving okay and making sure that you're not forgetting kindness okay so that's really what the word here implies salat okay so that that's one example uh, I like to give right now all right let's take a look at the other ones now in the Quran um, and of course uh, traditionally speaking it's always translated as the prayer okay and then when some verses which are a little bit sometimes the word doesn't fit or the, the word prayer doesn't fit in certain verse then the meaning kind of changes right so we change the meaning here typically like for example the synagogues are also called was salawat that's the synagogues well how can you say you know salawat is now synagogue it's, a, it's like well masajid right so a mosque of course and salawat so but let's let's stick to the to the basics for now all right so that's that's one example let's pick a few more now I've selected uh, three things because most times these three verses that you see here in my notes 
Salatul Fajr, Salatul Isha, and Salatul Vusata. Now, I've covered Salatul Vusata, right? This is in chapter 2, which we just talked about, which is actually not related to prayer because the context speaks about divorces. Let's take a look at the other two. The other two, interestingly, fall in Surah Nur, which is chapter 24, and verse 58. Just in one verse, God talks about both of these two instances. So let's go to 2458 and see what this means. Okay, so let's see if I can find it. There we go. So let's see if the word prayer, kind of the meaning, the, the traditional meaning of Salat as prayer fits here or not. Okay, so verse 58 says, And then it starts from here. And then where's the word Salat? There we go. All right, Fajr. So before the Fajr Salat, right, that's what traditionally uh, we speak. But let's take a look at the context, see what's going on. All right, so let me scroll up a little bit. Perfect. So let's go to verse 55. This is Surah Nur, which is chapter 24 in the Quran. And God has promised those who heed warning and do deeds of righteousness. He will make them successors in the earth, even as he made those successors who were before them. And he will establish for them their doctrine, which he approved for them, and will give them in exchange safety after the fear. They serve me. They ascribe not a partnership with me to anything. And those and whoso denies after that, they are the wantonly perfidious. Verse 56, and uphold the duty of Aqimus Salah. This is something interesting too, by the way. The word Salat always comes with the word aqim, right, means something to to uphold, right? Like it's just like the foundation to to make something qaim, right? Not just read. If it was just reciting or read, the word for you know reciting reading is is of course reciting is the Quran iqra, right? The word read iqra. It, the, the, the salat words never occurs in the Quran with with the word iqra salat. It's it, it doesn't happen. It's always aqim as salat. So you have to uphold the something, and it's always a noun. And I'm also going to talk about the the concept of abstract nouns in uh, with this word also. So here, wa wa right, which means uphold your duty, follow something closely. So make sure you follow what God is telling you, right? And God is telling from the top that I talk about. Do not describe partnership, right? Always serve God. That's what's happening from the top from the context so and uphold the duty and give the purity and obey the messenger that you might obtain mercy verse 57 think not that those who are indifferent to warning can escape in the earth and their habitation is the fire and evil is their journey's end now the verse comes O you heed warning let ask leave of those whom your right hand possess and those who have not reached puberty among you at three times now this is just one verse one sentence we cannot break it down into say min qabla salat fajr before the prayer no it's just one context right so and those who have not reached puberty among you at three times what are those three times before the duty of the dawn and when you lay aside your garments in the midday heat and after the duty of the night we mean about this salat isha so they have salat al fajr and then we have salat al isha which means just follow something closely your duties right uphold your duties three times of privacy for you salasu awrat al lakum so there are three times of privacy that people typically have and that's what god is letting you know you and they do no wrong outside of them so outside of these times is perfectly some of you move about others of you thus god makes plain to you the proofs and god is knowing wise so it's fairly straightforward right because it says kazalika yubayyanallahu lakum ulayat these are just plain you know proofs of god nothing complicated but the the, the of course objective here for us is to take a look at the, the concept of salat right and then wherever it's happening in the quran wherever this word is occurring 
if we consistently translate this word, which it perfectly fits in every instance of the 99 times it occurs in the Quran, it fits perfectly if it's in fact translated the way it means plainly. And we know what it means plainly, right? It means to follow something like a lead horse, have you know horses at the back and they follow the lead horse wherever the lead horse goes they go so it means doing your duty following closely so if you translate if you use this you know translation across the Quran you will find it fits perfectly every instance of where the word is all right so this is and by the way the reason why I chose um, so far these verses is because some Muslims, for example, think that there are three prayers. Some think there are five prayers. There are many, many sects, of course, um, among the Muslim community. And, of course, everyone has their own um, verdicts, right? Because based on the rules and regulations set forth by their own systems of different sects that are out there. All right. So, but so far, we understand that if you translate or use the word duty, um, that kind of makes sense. All right. Let's move forward. Let's take a look at the nouns, right? Or what happens? Look at, you know, there are about more than 80 instances of the word Salat, which is actually is a, is a noun. For example, all the way starting from Surah Baqarah, which is, of course, has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 instances of the word as a noun. So if it's a noun, it's not an action, right? Now, there, of course, form to verb which means to pray or to bless okay now this is of course since it's a verb it means praying pray let them pray you pray or bless and if you recall if i go back to for example uh, the meanings there we go the word uh, the word salu and of course uh, the different forms that we talked about earlier. I've already talked about this, of course. You'll notice that the word musallan or salat or musallin or salla, different forms, sort of like means right here as, as the word to bless. Like, for example, if you're not at the banquet, you're invited, um, then a person didn't arrive, then you say, all right, pray for that person, okay? So God bless that person. We've heard this term. It's a fairly common term, like even in, and um, you know other religions is that God bless you, right? We say, hey, God bless bless you. So the Muslims say it. Everyone says it. So that's also um, to pray or to bless. Okay. Now I've also had several comments. By the way, uh, many of you have asked uh, about the verse uh, where God talks about blessing the prophets. I'm going to cover this in a different lecture specifically, just that verse, and we'll take a look at the context of. How the word salat or you saloon and nabi, right? How does how does that salat happens to nabi, to the prophet? So I'll talk about that too. But all of these instances as noun in the Quran would mean duties to follow something closely. If that's all these meanings fit perfectly uh, well in that context, okay? And not just these verses. Of course, each verse has context something from the top something at the bottom okay all right so and then of course active participle and then a noun as a musallan and then so on for example what the min maqam ibrahim musalla if the word doesn't occur just in the context of strictly as a prayer right so it has other connotations but more importantly since like a, you know i already said that the quran is consistent which means that the, the word salat also has to be consistent. And the meaning is straightforward. According to the Arabic lexicon, it's just, yeah, it's just following closely. So that's what we do. We follow closely. Who do we follow? We follow God's instructions, the laws set forth in the Quran by God. All right. So that's salat. Let's see if I, all right. So yeah, we did talk about number Agenda point number two. All right, let's take a look at three quickly. Salat is an abstract noun. And this is interesting. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah also, chapter 2, verse 45. Let's see if I can bring this up. So let's go to 245. Here we go. So it's Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 45, where God says, Wasta'inu bis sabr was salat. Right? 
So, and seek help in patience and duty. But of course, we know the sabr is, of course, patience, right? To, to be patient. And then the salat, typically, of course, as, as the uh, traditional uh, translation is prayer, okay? Now, we can take help or seek help from sabr, which is, of course, an abstract noun. And of course, salat here is also an abstract noun. So, because you can't have a verb with an abstract noun, it doesn't, it's grammatically incorrect also. So, not to get into technically, but let's take a look at context and see what this means. So, God says, Enjoin your virtue upon mankind and forget yourselves when you read the law. Will you then not reason? Afala ta'kilun. And, and this is. Uh, you know, I've, I think made a video on aql, right, which is reasoning. You know, the Quran is is actively telling us to reason out things, not just blindly follow, right? Just because someone tells you, you have to reason. And when we say reason, which means why, right? Why should I do this? And once you ask this question, that's when you start to figure out the reason why, right? So God says, will you not reason and seek help? in patience and salat, which means duty. And it is hard save for the humble, which means you have to be patient and you have to continue to do what you are doing and follow God's commands, right? God's law. That's what this here it means. So even as an abstract noun, that's what it means. So regardless of which verse you look at, you would see that this meaning uh, fits perfectly, okay? All right, so that's the note so far. And of course, point number four is Quran is consistent. I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again because Quran says, hey, there is no inconsistency in the Quran, which means, you know, within the context, you would understand that the Quran is talking about if it's talking about Salat, that's what it's talking about when, within the context. Which means that it's the primary duty to God, which whatever God says, we have to do it. That's what Salat means. Upholding Salat, that's why it's always Akim Salat, right? Duty as a general concept, so you can treat Salat as hope, patience, or petitioning to God, generally, which all the human beings or um, you know, whether the Christian faith or, or Judaism or, or Islam or Muslims, you know, typically it's always petitioning to God. And the third aspect, of course, a context-dependent duty clear from text we should do. And that's true because every time we look at the various meanings uh, at 99 times in the Quran, this word occurs, each instance if you take a look at or if you keep this in mind that this is the primary duty to God, it's, you know, it is a general concept, hope, patience, petition, a context-dependent duty, you would know what to do when the when God uses the word salat in the Quran. All right. Now, typically, human beings, of course, we like rules and regulations. We like to create those rules and regulations. And, of course, they're, they're so um, some of these rules and regulations are so... Uh, difficult uh, at times uh, that you know it becomes a ritual it just becomes a word it just becomes uh, a thing that most as if you're a Muslim for example then you have to pray five times a day well there are other prayers also and and uh, and if I can say this Muslims not all not or not every Muslim prays five times a day all right even though that's the most important pillar of Islam out of the five pillars, which is Salat, which is Namaz, right? But Muslims today, they, they treat Namaz as just a thing, right? It's just, all right, they go to the mosque, they do the ritual, and then they go. Or if they're home, you still do the ritual in the home. All right, so now the, the big question, right? The big question, how do we actually pray? I mean, since we know that Salat in the Quran is different, you know, everywhere this word occurs, it doesn't talk about the actual doing or performing the ritual as people have 
created themselves. And if this was, even though this word occurs 99 times in the Quran, if God wanted this to be a ritual or God wanted this to be a specific instruction, like God gives specific instructions when God wants to give us specific instructions. For example, if inheritance, the law of inheritance in Surah Nisa, God talks about specifics, one-eighth, you know, half, brothers and daughters and sisters and whatever. God talks specifically, but God never talks specifically about the word salat as to how to pray, right? So the how part is something that mankind has created. And, and th there's a reason why, uh, you know, people created this. And the reason is simple, because they want to be able to petition to God at different times of the day, right? For example, we saw that, you know, Christianity has come up with their own sets of types of prayers. Judaism has, you know, of course, came up with their own types of prayers. And then Muslims also have different types of prayers. So, you know, going back to my initial uh, thought, and discussion that prayer is something petitioning to God. Now, whether you do it in a ritual format, whether you do it uh, once a day, twice a day, whether you are, are a, um, you know, whether you're doing it five times diligently, perfect. So it, it, everything is, is, is good because as long as you're petitioning to God, that's what Salat is all about. And of course, more importantly, as per Quran, it's the duty that is assigned to you in the Quran. And this word, of course, has occurred 99 times. If I were to pick any one of these verses, and let me know in comments, by the way, if you need me to cover, uh, because of course, I would love to cover each one of these in context and read through it, but that's gonna take us a long, long time. Maybe I'll do it in parts. But more importantly, if you want me to cover a specific verse where the word Salat occurs, out of these 99 times, I love to create and help you out. And of course, it's all learning. We learn from each other. Um, another video just to talk about that. And bear in mind, the basic meaning of the word Salat is duty. We must uphold our duties and continue to petition to God, um, You know, whether in, in terms of just seeking forgiveness or let's say praying, um, for anyone, for ourselves, for people, like we say, God bless you, right? Which means, hey, let's God have mercy on you. That's all uh, one way or the other in one form or the other meaning of Salat. But you take it to the next level where you're actually now ritualizing the concept and then you're binding people to follow certain rituals. And among these rituals, by the way, there are many, many forms. Some people pray with their hands open, some people pray with their hands closed, you know, hands on. So there again, they're, they're you know, you, as deeper as you go, things become a little uh, complicated. And that's what's happening in the world today, uh, within the Muslim world, and of course, in other uh, religions as well. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Of course, post your questions in the discussion area. I'd love to cover other instances um, that you feel that you come across or any other questions that you have uh, regarding the word Salah. With this, thanks so much for being here. My name is Dr. Syed. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Before you go, give it a like. Appreciate that. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys next time.